Hello listeners, and welcome to this week's episode of The Conspiracy Vault. Some of you may have heard of the topic I will be discussing in this episode. Wayfair, American e-commerce company that sells furniture and home goods. Identical pieces of furniture, all priced differently. All listed with different children's names. Upon further research, names of missing children. The conspiracy theory itself that Wayfair is secretly trafficking children through its website by advertising obscenely overpriced furniture listed with those missing children's names. The conspiracy itself can be traced back to a Twitter post on the 15th of June 2020. User Amazing Polly posted this tweet. My spidey senses are tingling. What's with these storage cabinets? Extremely high prices, all listed with girls' names and identical units selling for different amounts. The conspiracy didn't become viral until later on. Thursday, July 9th, 2020. A user under the name Princess Peach 1987 would post to the website Reddit. In the subreddit called r slash conspiracy, the title of that post read, Is it possible that Wayfair is involved in human trafficking with their WFX utility collection, or are these just extremely overpriced cabinets? This makes me sick to my stomach, if it's true. A look through this subreddit post. I found hundreds of people banding together to discuss the details of how Wayfair could be carrying out this operation. It led to the theory taking on new forms and reaching more commercial social media platforms such as Facebook and going back to Twitter. The original post was put up with a photo of four cabinets. There was the Naraya storage unit for $14,499, the Uritza storage cabinet for $13,799, the Samaya storage cabinet for $12,899 and the Olivia storage cabinet for $12,699. The notable thing about these units is despite being priced differently, they were all identical in the photos. The only other difference is that they were titled with different names. One user responds saying that the identical white cabinets are priced anywhere from $10,000 to $18,000 with different discounts on each cabinet. They then went on to note that each cabinet was named with a girl's name and a number between 4 and 12 next to the name. The same user later discovered that there were black cabinets with the same thing, identical cabinets priced differently but with different boys' names attached to the title. This user also notes that there are pillows that are priced at $10,000 on the website, with identical pillows being found on Amazon for just $32. Another Reddit user goes on to explain that Wayfair has a Platinum membership option with a separate call centre for Platinum members. This user claims to have received a screenshot from a friend who works at Wayfair, who was not allowed to answer the phone to a single Platinum customer. Apparently these calls had to go straight to the exclusive desk that operated separately. One of the items listed on the website had the name Yuritsa. A search on missingkids.org brought up one hit. The one result came back with the name Yuritsa Castro. The missing profile on the website says missing since June 10th, 2020. Missing from Arlington, Connecticut. Born on October 15th, 2003. Would now be 16 years old. She is a female who is biracial with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 2 and weighs roughly 125 pounds. The website goes on to say that Yuritsa was last seen on June 10th, 2020. Another item was labelled Stamper. A report on Tennessee Missing. Report says this. The Halls Police Department is asking for the local public's assistance in locating 17-year-old Althea Stamper out of the Halls, Tennessee area. Althea was last seen on June 11, 2017. Althea is described as female, white, blonde, blue eyes, 5 foot 2 and weighing roughly 125 pounds. One particular item on the Wayfair site was called a Duplessis Zodiac Sign Astrological Constellation 
personalised throw pillow priced at $9,999. An article on the OaklandPress.com, released on May 8, 2020, was subject to attention in this subreddit after an article on the Wayfair site titled Duplessis was linked to another missing girl. The article written by Eileen Wingblad reads... A 13-year-old girl is missing from Southfield and police are asking for the public's help in locating her. Samara Duplessis, last known whereabouts, was her residence in Southfield where she was taking out the garbage on May 7th before going missing. Samara is described as an African-American female with a medium complexion, long brown braided hair and hazel eyes. She's 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighs approximately 110 pounds. Another report in Missing.org was also shared around the Reddit post due to an item on the Wayfair site being given the unusual name of Pimental. The report reads, Missing, last seen alive April 29, 2009. Adalberto was last seen on April 29, 2009. He is believed to be in Falls River, Massachusetts. His last name is Pimental, age when last known alive, 14. Ethnicity, Hispanic Latino. Male, 150 pounds. Hair, brown. Eye colour, brown. Every item that was listed on Wayfair had a name in its description or title that could be linked back to a missing person. However, people came forward to inform the Redditors that some of these people had actually been found. One of the missing persons herself came forward in a video using explicit language to drive home the fact that she was safe and sound and people should stop putting her photo next to pictures of Wayfair furniture and spreading it across the web. Here are some examples of some of those children who were found and some who are still missing. The CorriaDaily.com released an article on July 11th, 2020. Sachin Jangra wrote, The popular American online furniture retailer Wayfair has come under fire for allegedly selling humans with their overpriced storage cabinets and utilities. The Wayfair child trafficking scheme began with a post on subreddit R Conspiracy. Several children linked to the products are Naraya, Samayan Mooman, Sumara Duplessis, Yuritsa Castro, Annabelle Wilson, Kyla Coleman. Missing or found details are available below. Samaya Moomin. Upon initial research, we found out that Samaya was missing in June 2020, but has since been found in her hometown. Samara Duplessis. The 13-year-old Michigan girl, Samara Duplessis, is still missing. She measured 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighed 110 pounds, with long brown hair and braids and hazel eyes. She was last spotted by family members taking out the garbage. Update. According to our users, she was found safe and sound. Yuritsa Castro. The 16-year-old Harrington, Connecticut girl is missing from June 10th, 2020. There are no updates on her status so far. Cameron James Ziedzik. Ziedzik went missing on April 2nd, 2020 in Colvert County. The police located him successfully with the help of people, according to ABC 13. Mary Durrett. The 16-year-old girl went missing on December 14, 2017, near Herman Park. She was found safe after one week. I was able to do some further reading, and Sumara Duplessis' mother even came forward to say her daughter had been found. She shared the happy news across her social media Facebook page. Even then, Redditors were quick to spot that the photo that the mother shared of her daughter's return was a photo from 2018. Some relatives began asking whether the mother had even sold her daughter and claimed that she was missing. They wanted to know why the mother wouldn't share a more recent photo if she had been found alive and well. Despite some of these children being found and no longer missing, the conspiracy itself got darker. There were curtains named Dueling Curtains, listed at $99, and then on the Wayfair website, there were identical curtains named Dubay Curtains that were listed for $9,999. The strange coincidences didn't stop there. That strange name I mentioned, Pimental. Well, a private vendor selling items through the Wayfair site called Isabella Max was selling items such as artworks for children's bedrooms. An example of an item listed on their website were four dinosaur plaques, each plaque with a different dinosaur. This four pack is sold as one item. 
They were priced at just over $30,000. And if you go on the website now, they have been reduced to $184.99. It shows that you can save $30,000 if you buy these four plaques now. The name of this item? Pimental Baby Dinosaurs. What shook online users the most was the item description. The artwork was listed with weights. You could buy the plaques 12 by 12, weighing 20 pounds, or 18 by 18, weighing 24 pounds. 24 by 24 weighs 28 pounds, and 32 by 32 weighs 32 pounds. A user then sent a link from the disabledworld.com website of their baby weight calculators, which show that a 12 month old weighs roughly 20 pounds, an 18 month old weighs roughly 24. A 24-month-old weighs roughly 28. And if you can guess where this is going, a 32-month-old weighs roughly 32 pounds. People also went on to speculate further that this independent vendor selling these items, called Isabella Max, could be linked back to Isabel Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's sister. If you're unfamiliar with Ghislaine Maxwell and her story, she's the very close friend of Jeffrey Epstein, a website selling the exact items called CamillesOnTheHill.co had listed these dinosaur plaques for only a couple of hundred euro. Likewise, you could buy three animal plaques in the same fashion, named Stamper Striped. Stamper, again, was another missing child that I mentioned earlier on. These three animal plaques of two zebras and a lion would cost you $137.99 today but they are reduced from $20,131. You could save 99% on the asking price from last month. It should be noted, though, that Stamper, the missing boy, has also since been found. There were $45,000 couches reduced to $25,000, a pendant light for $16,000 reduced from $23,000, and a vanity set down to $14,000 from $23,000. Funnily enough, this vanity set is called the Kaya 10 and is listed at £80 and is listed at weighing £80. A Reddit user is quick to show a link to a website that proves the average weight for a 10-year-old, Kaya 10, is £72. Another strange connection Redditors were also able to make came with the SKU number attached to each overpriced item on Wayfair. For example, each item on the website contained within its description a number that starts with SKU, which stands for Stop Keep Stock Keeping Unit. For example, one item might have SKU W002983000 written next to its title or description. One Redditor then posted to the subreddit, claiming that if you typed one of those codes from any of the overpriced items into the Russian search engine Yandex, pictures of young girls scantily clothed appeared on the website. Another person confirmed that if you type in SRC USA with the same WOO code, you are shown children of young ages in graphic photos of a distressing nature. Some suggested that SRC could stand for storage cabinet, SRCmodels.com is a Russian model and agency for men, women and children. Online users thought it was strange that when you clicked on children on the SRC Models website, all that appears on the website was a search bar that asks for a code. People began typing in the same WOO codes into this search bar looking for these missing children. Of course, the search bar could also be there to protect the children on the website too, where agencies and parents are given the code to safeguard the photos on the website. But who really knows? Other users were also quick to confirm that most things typed into the Yandex search bar unfortunately do bring up pictures of children in questionable locations and clothing, and has long been the topic of scrutiny on other internet forums. Another site mentioned within this thread is IMGSRC, or Image SRC. And this has also been the topic of conversation, with many online users disgusted in the content that they have found there. It has been reported constantly since its existence, and again is a platform for people to share indecent photos of children, according to another Reddit user.
The company selling the majority of this overpriced furniture on the Wayfair website is called WFX Utility. Upon further research, I found that WFX Utility is owned by, and has always been owned by, Wayfair. WFX Utility supplies the furniture and Wayfair sells it on. Many have speculated that even if children are not involved in this, perhaps some other type of trafficking is afoot. So what did Wayfair have to say about all of this? They quickly released an initial statement that said something like, there was a price glitch on the web on the white cabinet. Reddit is full of idiots and people are making something out of nothing. Mm. They later redacted this statement and replaced it with a new one that said, the prices are accurate as the cabinets are industrial grade. We have since removed them to rename them. Of course, this doesn't account for the rest of the overpriced items on the website, which have also since been changed. In 2019, Wayfair had their own had their own staff protesting their company when it came to light that Wayfair were furnishing detention camps for children, which Redditors also marked as notable. Cheryl Wishover wrote an article for Vox.com in 2019 that said this, Wayfair employees protest alleged sale of furniture for border detention facility. Quote, we believe it is our business to sell to any customer who is acting within the laws of the countries within which we operate, end quote. This came from the company's CEO. Many employees at the home goods retailer Wayfair staged a walkout Wednesday after discovering what they believe is a large order of bedroom furniture the company fulfilled for a contractor that works with facilities detaining children near the US-Mexico border. According to a letter signed by 550 employees, Wayfair has sold $200,000 worth of furniture to a non-profit organisation called BCFS, an order from BCFS was surfaced in the company's Slack, which is a group chat platform. And concerns began circulating when employees looked into the organisation's mission. As per the organisation's website, BCFS partners with government agencies, corporations, non-profits and community leaders to develop programmes and service models that combat challenges in health and human services. In 2018, the New York Times reported that BCFS has received at least $179 million in federal contracts since 2015 under the government's so-called unaccompanied alien children program, designed to handle migrant youths who arrive in the country without a parent or family member. The furniture, according to the employee letter, was sent to a facility opening in Carrizo Springs, Texas that will be outfitted to detain up to 3,000 migrant children. These kinds of facilities have come under increasing scrutiny and condemnation as reports about appalling conditions emerge. Wayfair's leadership responded to the employee letter with its own statement, which Twitter user Fizz for Gizzle posted. The user is not a Wayfair employee, but two employees confirmed it was sent by CEO Niraj Shah to employee organisers. The letter neither confirms nor denies the sale was made. As business leaders, we also believe it's in the importance of respecting diversity of thought within our organisation and across our customer base. No matter how strongly any one of us feels about an issue, it is important to keep in mind that not all employees or customers agree. Your fellow employees hold a wide range of opinions and perspectives and Wayfair, as a mass market brand, is oriented to serve a broad and diverse customer base. Another strange link that people found was that the co-founder of Wayfair, Niraj Shah, is also the co-founder of the Shah Foundation, a foundation that works with children. Wikipedia says that Shah co-founded Wayfair in 2002 with his Cornell classmate Steve Conine and has been its CEO since its inception. Shah was included in the Fortune list of 40 under 40 for 2013. In 2017, Shah became a director of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. In May 2017, Wayfair's share price rose to $70 per share, making Shah and his co-founder Steve Conine both billionaires. As of 2019, each had an estimated net worth of $2.3 billion. Shah is married to Jill Shah. They have two children and they live in the Back Bay area of Boston. The Shah Family Foundation website says, for us, it's about innovation and the people. 
We invest in smart, creative, thoughtful people doing innovative and transformative work. In some cases, we roll up our sleeves and become part of the team for a time, providing analysis connections, introductions and thought partnership in addition to grants. We like fixing things and seeing things work better and stronger than before. Shah's wife Jill is the CEO of this enterprise and many were shocked to find out that Shah attended the Sun Valley Tycoon Summit in 2015 alongside Harvey Weinstein, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates and many more. It is also noted by Reddit users that all of the people that attended the tycoon seem to operate organisations for children. So is there a reasonable explanation for the way that Wayfair's items were priced on the website? Well, Michael Eisen would say yes. His 2011 article found on his blog website reads, A few weeks ago, a postdoc in my lab logged onto Amazon to buy the lab an extra copy of Peter Lawrence's The Making of a Fly, a classic work in developmental biology that we and most other developmental biologists consult regularly. The book published in 1992 is out of print, but Amazon listed 17 copies for sale. 15 used from $35.54 and 2 new from $1,730,045.91 plus $3.99 in shipping. I sent a screen capture to the author who was appropriately amused and intrigued, but I doubt even he would argue the book is worth that much. At first I thought it was a joke, a graduate student with too much time on their hands, but there were two new copies for sale. Each could be offered for well over a million dollars, and the two sellers seemed not only legit, but fairly big time. Over 8,000 and 125,000 ratings in the last year, respectively. The prices looked random, suggesting they were set by a computer, but how did they get so out of whack? Amazingly, when I reloaded the page the next day, both the prices had gone up. Each was now nearly $2.8 million dollars, And whereas previously the prices were $400,000 apart, they were now within $5 of each other. So I was intrigued and I started to follow the page incessantly. By the end of the day, the higher priced copy had gone up again, this time to $3.5 million. And now a pattern was emerging. On the day we discovered the million dollar prices, the copy offered by Bordy Book was 1.270589 times the price of the copy offered by Profnath. And now the Bordy book copy was 1.27058 times the prof nap again. So clearly, at least one of the sellers was setting their price algorithmically in response to changes in the other's prices. I continued to watch carefully and the full pattern emerged. Once a day, prof nap set their price to be 0.9983 times Bordy book's price. The prices would remain close for several hours until Bordy Book noticed Prothnath's change and elevated their price to 1.270589 times Prothnath's higher price. The pattern continued perfectly for the next week. What's fascinating about all of this is both the seemingly endless possibilities for chaos and mischief. It seems impossible that we stumbled onto the only example of this kind of upward pricing spiral All it took were two sellers adjusting their prices in response to each other by factors whose products were greater than one. And while it might have been more difficult to deconstruct, one can easily see how even more bizarre things could happen when more than two sellers are in the game. And as soon as it was clear what was going on here, I and the people I talked to about it couldn't help but start thinking about ways to exploit our ability to predict how others would price their books down to the fifth significant digit especially when they were clearly not paying full attention to what their algorithms were doing. But alas, nobody ultimately noticed. The price peaked on April 18th, but on April 19th, Prof Nath's price dropped to $106.23. The Bordy book soon followed. But Peter Lawrence can now comfortably boast that one of the biggest and most respected companies on earth valued his book at a great $23,698,655.93 plus $3.99 for shipping. Alongside this, other Redditors were not so quick to believe this conspiracy theory of Wayfair selling children through cabinets. 
they added suggestions of potential money laundering. Some also suggested that the names given to the furniture contained the names of babies on the recently trending Baby Names website. Others stated that the FBI reported 421,394 new cases in 2019 of NCIC entries for missing kids, so most names are bound to get a hit on missing persons reports across USA. The entire conspiracy theory has since been debunked. An article on Snopes.com written by Dan Evon in July 2020 reads, Is Wayfair trafficking children via overpriced items? The claim that Wayfair is trafficking children is based almost entirely on one person's confusion over an expensive cabinet. Posted on the 10th of July 2020, The claim is that the furniture store Wayfair is trafficking children via overpriced items. The rating given is false. In July 2020, some social media users accused the furniture store Wayfair of trafficking children. This gravely serious accusation was not based on police reports, first-hand accounts, financial records or deep investigative reporting. Rather, it was based on the fact that some items on Wayfair were listed at exorbitant prices compared to other similar items. This conspiracy theory, like so many conspiracy theories, started with a wild and unfounded assumption that would be sickening if it were actually true. As of this writing, absolutely no credible evidence has been offered to back up this accusation. But the conspiracy theory did have real impact. According to a July 20 press release from Polaris, its National Human Trafficking Hotline received such an extreme volume of reports related to this rumour, none of which contained information beyond what was already reported online, that it struggled to to respond to other calls from people potentially in need. The statement encouraged callers to learn more about what human trafficking really looks like. Members of the public often warn people to take Snopes articles with a pinch of salt. But what do you think? Do you think this conspiracy carries any weight? Let me know at cultvoltpodcast at gmail.com or Twitter and Instagram at cultvoltpod. I'm your speaker, Casey. And this has been The Conspiracy Vault.